This is a Cistron Donner 6020 microwave frequency counter. This counts from 10 hertz to 20 gigahertz in uh, three different bands here. You've got band 1 and 2 and uh, 3 and 4 over here on the end connector, the BNC for the lower ones. Last time I powered this up I had two failures, a 132 failure and a 140 failure. So I thought I would power it up today and see if I could figure out uh, what the problem was. And I was greeted with a large popping sound from inside so obviously we've got a major malfunction. I don't have any manuals or documentations or schematics for this so this one's going to be tough. Now this is a complicated piece of equipment. I've looked all over the internet and these weren't a real a real popular counter as far as I know so it may be difficult but um, I do have another one that works so maybe I can between the two of them I can save this one from the the fate of failure anyway um, that's the next step to see if we can find out where the pop came from and put the smoke back in here's a look in the top side of the instrument here see the power supply in the back more than likely that's where the problem is. I do see a spattering of tantalum capacitors though around the area here. Um, here's where the microwave goodies are done in here. I hope the problem isn't in there otherwise we may have a problem. It's got two fuses. Which we'll see if a fuse blew. That one's alright. That one's all right. So the fuses didn't blow. I suspected a tantalum, but I don't see any signs of it. And when I heard a popping sound, I figured I might find one that was uh, blown apart. A lot of times when they fail catastrophically, it blows them apart. They can actually start on fire. I've seen that happen, too. Most of the circuitries on the top here, the bottom, uh, I'll have to check pull these boards off looks like there's some boards underneath here like I say I don't have any documentation for this thing so um, hopefully hopefully this won't become a Cistron donor instead of a Cistron donor but it's a nice counter I've got another one like it and it really works nice so hopefully hopefully I can get this one working but we'll keep our fingers crossed here's a look on the bottom of the board Nothing jumps out at me on here anyway, but I found something that's a clue right here. And at first I thought it was a beetle bug, but it turns out it's a tantalum capacitor kit, and this is part of the kit. So now all I need to do is find the other side of this thing. It blew it in half. So that shouldn't be too hard. And it's orange too, so I don't see many of those. Although there are some in back of the display here. Anyway, I'm going to do an inspection. I am going to have to pull the front panel out and look in here in the display section, but the fact that I found half of a tantalum cap makes me suspect that's where the problem is. Common problem with these old things. They, uh, Actually, it's nice that sometimes that they do what they did here and uh, blow apart because sometimes when they just leak, it can be a real problem trying to find them. I don't see half of an orange tantalum here, so I'm going to have to dig a little further. Anyway, that will be the next step. I'm going to remove the front panel now. To do that, you've got two side panels that have to be removed. And then on the front panel itself, there are three screws on each side. Here, and along the bottom, you can see three screws, machine screws. Okay, and band four, which comes in through this end connector, there's a solid coaxial
connector here that has to be removed. I don't have a I don't have a torque wrench, which is really the way you want to do these things, but I'll have to make do with what I got here. This has to be removed carefully. Well, you don't want to cross thread these things and you've got big problems. Then you really do have a Cistron donor. Okay. This end soldered. Eh, nothing's easy. Um, I should be playing Jethro Tull song, Nothing is Easy. But I want to get access in here. See if I can find a tantalum, tantalum cap that lost its, blew its half off. It made that unmistakable sound of a tantalum cap going off. I've heard that too many times. Well, I guess I took the front panel off a little too soon. Look at that. That's a half of a tantalum capacitor. So, <laughs> I guess that's what went pow. Or pop. I guess it wasn't a pow. Could have been. Anyway. God, I should replace every one of these darn things. I'll replace that one and see if I can get it running again, and then we'll go from there. I still have to find out why it had those error reports on the screen. So, who knows, maybe that was leaking and dragging down one of the supply rails. I don't know, but we'll check it after I place that tunnel. Oh, and here's a little tip. Not too hard on this one because I uh, have pretty good access to both sides of this power supply board. But if you want to know how to find out where a part's located by looking on the other side of the board, get one of these lasers and shine it on the, there's the bad cap. And if you look on the other side of the board, there's the bad cap. You can see it on the one leg, right? Right there. So anyway, that helps you see from the other side, the blind side, where you have to unsolder. So I need to unsolder those two leads and then I can put in another cap, which will be a higher voltage, I can guarantee you that. We gotta get this thing working. This is where the original tantalum was that popped. So I pulled it out and I powered it up and this one immediately popped. So I pulled them all out. I'm going to replace all of them. And um, this, uh, these are the supply rails here. And what they are is this is, these are uh, decoupling caps, bypass caps across the power rails. This one here on the end is minus 5.2. This one is also minus 5.2. This one is plus 5. This one is 10. Here's the 10 volt output. These are the regulators. These two, the first two, our LM345Ks, these are minus 5 volt regulators. The two bottom ones here and here are LM323, these are positive 5 volt regulators. And on those terminals, here's what I measure. Now, on the output connectors, which are lettered here, you've got minus 5.2, minus 5.2, ground, plus 5, plus 10, and plus 5. I've measured the ripple on all of these outputs. The ripple on the 10 volts is high. I'm getting about 400 millivolts of ripple on that line, so 
I need to find the capacitor that feeds that regulator. And by the way, yeah, these um, these caps are on the inputs to the regulators. Here's the um, LM323 positive regulator. And as it shows here, it calls for a 1 microfarad solid tantalum on the input, which is what those tantalums that blew up were. So, with the high amount of ripple I had on there, and I can't believe that it was enough to blow that, but there must have been enough ripple on there that that cap didn't like it. So that first cap that went was on the 10 volt, 10 volt rate voltage rail. I found six 1 microfarad tantalum capacitors in my capacitor bin. These are a little older, so I'm a little leery about using them. So what I'm going to do, put them on a power supply, run them up. They're rated 1 microfarad at 35 volts. So I'm going to run them up to 30 volts and leave them for a while. And then I will take them off the power supply, discharge them through a resistor, and then measure the capacitance and ESR. And if they look acceptable, I'll solder them into the counter. The six tantalums have been replaced here. I measured all these caps. They're all good. ESRs are normal. Regulators are okay. These are the inputs to the regulators. The data sheets call for a 1 microfarad tantalum at 35 volts. So that's what we got in there now. And um, we've gotten rid of the errors, which is good. Let's try band 1. Band 1 is 10 hertz to 100 megahertz. So I'm going to transmit with an HT 145-300. Now we'll test band 2 which is 100 megahertz to 112 megahertz. 145-300. So I'm going to transmit on UHF 445-750. I'm about two feet away from the antenna. I'll put this on a um, generator and I'll measure the sensitivity of it now that I've got it working. I'm going to test band 4. So I hit band Four. Now we're connected to the UHF connector and I'm going to transmit 445.750. Band 4 goes from 0.5 gigahertz to 20 gigahertz and it's measuring 445.750. So it looks like the unit's working now, and the problem was um, power supply rails were having problems. I corrected that. I did reset some chips, and I wish I would have waited because that may have cured another problem. I'm not sure. I did have two faults originally when I got this, and those have cleared up now. So um, I'm going to put it back together and um, we'll go from there. You really should have the, the shielding on it to the top and bottom to shield it. Anyway, that's the repair of the Cistron Donner 6020. These are really nice units. I really like them. I got another, actually I got another one that's working and a donor, which I didn't have to use. So maybe a future video will be to try and repair the donor. It's always nice to have a donor when you have a Cistron Donner. <laughs> <laughs> but um, anyway, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it and tune in for the next one whenever that is. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.